everyone, my name is Kristen and I'm here today on the Shabby Fabrics at Home set. And today I'm going to be showing you guys how to create this super cute made with love oven mitt. This oven mitt is the perfect uh, gift for Mother's Day. If you haven't figured out what you want to get for your mom or that special figure in your life, this might be the perfect time for, to make this oven mitt. Uh, we have gone ahead and we've created a kit for this project as well. And the kit includes all of the colors of embroidery floss that you would need. It includes this super cute fabrics. There are these dainty little heart fabrics and these cute cherries. We have these pre-fused laser cut hearts, as well as your embroidery fabric, some fusible interfacing, and this cute little tag which you can personalize um, to just add that special touch. We've also added a yard of Insulbright to help uh, protect your hands and make this project super functional. So let's go ahead and start working on the creation of our applique. So in the kit, you will get this textured cream fabric. And the first thing that you need to do with this fabric to prepare your applique is you need to take your fusible interfacing. And you'll notice that this has two different sides to it. It's got a smooth side and a textured side. And the textured bumpy side is going to be the side with the glue on it. So you're gonna want that to go downwards. So I'm gonna place the bumpy side down onto the back of my fabric. And I'm gonna fuse that on with my iron. I am using the Aliso iron today. It's a cute little portable size, um, but it is perfect um, for any of your ironing needs. It gets super hot and um, it's really just the perfect product for this project. So I'm just going to fuse that circle down. And you'll notice that the Aliso iron also has this awesome little resting pad for when you're not using it to help protect your surfaces. All right, I've got my interfacing fused onto the back of my fabric, and I'm gonna set that aside for a second. The next portion that we need to prepare are our fusible heart shapes. And these are actually going to become cherries in our applique. So I'm going to take my Wafer One Daylight Light Box and I'm gonna go ahead and trace these chocolate drips onto my hearts. So I'm just laying them onto my tracing diagram, which is included in the pattern. Just like so. I'm gonna take a micron pin or any other fine point pin. You're gonna to wanna to use a permanent marking pin because um, these are going to be fused onto our fabric and we don't want our lines to disappear. So I'm just going to trace my drips onto the hearts. All right, there's one. All right, just like that, they are ready to go. All right, so the next thing we are going to do is we are going to use our tracing diagram to get the layout right on our fabric. So I'm going to line up my interfacing circle with this dotted line on my diagram. And you can kind of see the interfacing through the fabric. All right, so that's about where I want it. And now I'm going to take my hearts and just lay them right where they need to be. just like that. And so you definitely wanna make sure that you remove the backing from your hearts. And so now you're just gonna carefully transfer over your fabric to your ironing station and fuse these hearts right in place. And so like I said earlier, we used that micron pin because at this point, if we had used like a friction pin, our lines would be disappearing. We're also tracing the lines on our hearts before anything else because it's a darker fabric and even with a light box, it might be kind of difficult to see the shapes that you need to trace. So the next thing you would do is you would take this fabric and line it up again onto your tracing diagram and just trace the rest of that design out with a friction pin. This part can be used with a friction pin because we're not gonna be doing any other ironing. 
All right, so here we have our embroidery completely traced out, and I'm gonna go ahead and cut out this outer circle right here. And I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to fray the edges of your applique. Now we are not doing any of the embroidery on camera because we covered all of these stitches in our hand embroidered Easter egg video. It will show you exactly how to do every single stitch that is required for this project. We also have the embroidery diagrams in the pattern if you guys have any questions or uh, maybe you're new to hand embroidery. An additional tool, if you guys are newer to hand embroidery, or maybe you're left-handed and it's difficult for you to learn by watching somebody right-handed, um, we have this stitch guide available. Um, and this stitch guide is perfect, and I'll show you exactly why. First of all, it stands up, which is super easy to use when you're in the process of embroidering. Um, but when you open it, you'll notice um, it's got stitches with instructions on how to do it for both left-handed and right-handed people. So this is a really great tool and I recommend it for anybody. Here is our applique all prepared. And if you like the look of a raw edge, you can go ahead and this is what I did on my sample, is I just kind of started roughing up the edges with my fingernail and you can play with it as much as you would like, or you could leave it just like this. But as you'll see, that's starting to fray the edges. You can also take a pin or a needle and go ahead and start to pull out some of these uh, extra loose threads and just mess with it a little bit. But so that is how you will create that frayed edge. And here is our completed applique. So this is what it will look like after all of those steps. And we're gonna go ahead and set this aside and we're gonna move on to the construction of our oven mitt. All right, so I have gone ahead and I've prepared my fabrics ahead of time. These are cut specifically to the cuts listed in the pattern. I have one layer of the outer heart fabric and I have two layers of insole bright. And like I said before, this is gonna make sure that your hands stay protected um, while you're using your oven mitt because we have these two layers. But so we need to quilt our fabric. As you see um, on our sample here, it's got these cute quilt lines, um, which just add a special touch to it. And there's two different ways you can go about creating your quilt lines. So the first one is, is you can find your 45 degree on your fabric and you can draw your lines spaced about an inch and a quarter apart. Or what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let the fabric do a little bit of the work for me. You'll notice it has this grid of hearts on it and I'm gonna use that to my advantage. So today I have here my creative grids ruler and this is six and a half inches by 24 inches, which is the perfect size for this project. And I am just lining that up with a row of hearts. And I'm going to take my friction pin and I'm just gonna mark a line. And I'm gonna space my lines about every fourth row of hearts. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, draw a line right there. Again, just marking my lines. And I'm gonna continue that in both directions. So I'm gonna go completely this way, and then I'm gonna go ahead and do them the other direction as well. So it creates those diamond shapes. We have gone ahead and traced our lines and I've also gone ahead and quilted most of them. When I am quilting on my sewing machine, I'm gonna be using a little bit larger of a stitch length. I just feel like that gives an overall nicer finish. So my stitch length is set to about a four, um, but you can play around with your sewing machine and see what you like best. So let's go ahead and finish up these two lines. Today, I will be sewing on my Bernina 770 QE, and it's an awesome sewing machine. We absolutely love it. All right, so our panel is complete, and we are ready to start tracing our oven mitt shape onto the back of this. So I'm gonna flip it over, and I'm going to take my oven mitt template, and I'm gonna fold up this little lining extension section because we are not creating the lining right now. We are only tracing the mitt shape. So I'm gonna fold that up and line this up at the bottom of my fabric. And now I'm just gonna take a friction pin and I'm gonna trace around my oven mitt shape. Just 
just like so. And the lines don't need to be super dark. You just need to be able to see the shape. Alrighty, so the line that we have just drawn is going to actually be our sew line. So we're not going to be cutting on our sew line. We're gonna be cutting about three quarters of an inch outside of it. And that's just gonna reduce some of the bulk while we're sewing and make it a little bit easier to maneuver underneath our sewing machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out. And again, I'm using my Karen K Buckley scissors. These are so perfect for cutting through all of this insole bright. I would highly recommend a good pair of scissors like these for this project. When you get to this thumb area for now, you don't have to cut down into it. You can just cut straight around the top curve. Okay, so now that we've got our mitt shape cut out, now we're going to apply our applique. So I'm just going to flip this over and I'm going to look that looks about right to me, but I'm gonna actually use my template as a guide to make sure I'm getting it in exactly the right spot. So I know that my line is about three quarters of an inch in. There we go. And I'm just gonna mark on either side just to give myself a rough estimate. And this looks like right here is gonna be my perfect spot. I'm gonna take my Roxanne glue stick. This is really convenient to hold things down while you're sewing if you don't want them to slide out of place. And just add a little bit of that to the back. And give it a firm press down. And then it's gonna stay in place while we're sewing. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sew um, probably about at a quarter of an inch um, right on that interfacing circle that we applied to the applique earlier. All right, so we have our cute little hand embroidered patch attached on to our oven mitt. Um, if you're having some issues with the frayed edges kind of tucking up under your threads while you're sewing, um, you can keep lifting up the foot of your sewing machine to try and lay it flat, or you can use your seam ripper after you're done sewing to kind of untuck it from underneath those threads. Um, just a quick helpful tip for you guys. The next part that we are going to do is we are going to cut out the back of our oven mitt so we are going to take our other quilted panel here. We are going to lay it with our right sides together. And I'm just gonna throw a few pins in there, just like so, to hold it together. We don't want any of these layers slipping and sliding. And this is just gonna save us some time. We don't need to trace our pattern again. We're just going to cut out the exact same shape that we have on top here. So I'm taking my scissors and I am just going to cut around the same exact shape that I have. So what you would do at this point is you would go ahead with your sewing machine and you would sew on this sew line that we traced right here. After you're done sewing, you would cut away your excess seam allowance to about an eighth of an inch. Um, and this is also the point where you would cut into this little thumb shape right here. So this is what it would look like after you were done sewing. And at this point, you would go ahead and turn this inside out. Um, I like to use one of these clover point turners. It really helps you get into the edges. Um, this point is also great for really narrow spaces like the thumb. So you're just gonna go ahead and start to turn this inside out. There we go, and our oven mitt is starting to take its final shape here. All that we have to do now is add the lining. 
I have gone ahead and I have cut out my lining shape. All I did was I used our template and I made sure to have the bottom edge of the lining down at the bottom of my fabric and I just traced around. So you are going to pin your lining right sides together and you're going to go ahead and you're gonna cut about a half inch around your lining. Um, this is going to be our sew line. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew onto this sew line. And once you've done that, this is what it will look like. I have trimmed away my excess to about an eighth of an inch. And now our lining is ready to be inserted into our oven mitt. The easiest way that I think to do this is to just simply put your lining on your hand and then reach your lining into your oven mitt. And this allows you to get into all of the spaces, all the little nooks and crannies. You can also use your point turner to help get it down into the thumb. Just like so. So now we've got our excess lining fabric hanging out the bottom of our oven mitt. And what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna take your lining and you're gonna fold it in half until the raw edge of the lining meets the top edge of the oven mitt. And then we're just simply gonna fold it over to create the cuff of the oven mitt. Just like that. And so now what you would do is you can either hand stitch this down, you can use a blind stitch um, and do it that way. Or what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the tray off of my sewing machine and slide my oven mitt onto it and just rotate my oven mitt around my sewing machine. And my seam is gonna be at about a quarter of an inch. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. All right, so I am just going to slide my oven mitt onto my machine like this. And then as I'm sewing, I can rotate it around and it's super easy. So I'm gonna put my foot down and sew at a quarter of an inch on the bottom edge of the cuff. And now we have the top edge of this cuff stitched down. And the last step is we get to personalize our little made with love tag here. I'm taking my micron pin again, just because it's a fine point and it'll allow me to write in this little small space. And I'm just gonna say made with love by Kristen. And you're going to peel the backing off of the tag. And I think I'm gonna position mine right here in the middle, but you can really put it wherever you would like. That looks good to me. And I'm just gonna take my iron and fuse that into place. And you can also, if you want to, you could do some decorative stitching around the edges or um, you could just leave it ironed on like this. That's the really great thing about this project is you can really make it your own. It's however you wanna do it, you're making it with love. So it's all about however you want to personalize this project. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I had so much fun teaching you guys about this awesome project. Like I said, it would make a really great gift for Mother's Day. If you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. We love interacting with you guys. Feel free to subscribe to the channel if you liked what you saw here today. Thank you so much and have a great day, you guys. Bye.